In this video, we will look at a few examples to help us practice deductive reasoning and the logical laws of the law of detachment, the law of contrapositive, and the law of syllogism. This first example says, suppose B makes the following statements, which are known to be true. If Central High School wins today, they will go to the regional tournament. So that's a if P, then Q situation. Central High School won today. So that's P. So what's the logical conclusion? Well, they must be going to the regional tournament. The logical conclusion is that they will go to the regional tournament. So this was an example of the law of detachment because we know if P then Q is true, if they win today, then they go to the regional tournament. And we know P is true, they won. Therefore, Q must be true, they will go to the regional tournament. So that's again, the law of detachment. Although you might be able to figure that out without actually knowing the term law of detachment, it's a good thing to know. All right, let's go to example B. Here are two true statements, be careful. Okay, if angle A and angle B are a linear pair, then the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B equals 180 degrees. Okay, so that's if P then Q. If I say if or angle A and angle B are a linear pair, that's P. Angle A plus angle B equals 180 is Q. My second statement is measure of angle 1 equals 90 and measure of angle 2 equals 90. Now, that doesn't seem to be either P or Q, but you can probably realize that if they're both 90, then the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B must be 180. So this is sort of like saying Q again. What conclusion can you draw? Actually, nothing. This is not one of those logical thing properties. If P then Q is true and Q is true, it doesn't mean that P has to be true. So in other words, just because these two angles are each 90 degrees, doesn't mean that they have to be a linear pair. Maybe they're just two 90 degree angles that are completely separate from each other and not touching. To be a linear pair, they have to be adjacent to each other and make a straight line. So it's completely possible that these two angles are not a linear pair. So there's really no conclusion that we can draw from those statements. Now let's look at the third example. Determine the conclusion from the true statements below. So we're assuming these things are true. Statement one, babies wear diapers. Statement two, my little brother does not wear diapers. Well, just thinking about this, what does that mean? If all babies wear diapers and this little brother does not wear diapers, well, he's probably not a baby. So the correct conclusion that you could draw from this is my little brother is not a baby. Because if he was a baby, then he would be wearing diapers, but he doesn't wear diapers. Now let's just think about this in the symbolic notation just to practice that a little bit. Let's say that babies wear diapers is Q. And this second statement is my little brother does not wear diapers. So that's basically like saying if you are my little brother, then you do not wear diapers. So that's if P then not Q. So if we know that this is true, if P then not Q is true, and Q is true, which is the opposite of this right here, then what's gonna be the logical conclusion is not P. And this is actually the law of contrapositive. Anytime you know the opposite of the conclusion of one of the statements, so my little brother does not wear diapers. So we know the opposite of this. We know that he does wear diapers, or sorry, we know that babies do wear diapers. Then our conclusion is the opposite of the original part, which is my little brother is not a baby then. So that again is the law of contrapositive. Looks a little weird because I did P implies not Q as opposed to P implies Q, but it's really the same thing.